Welcome to the Abyss. I'm Jacqueline, and today we're starting a new three-part series all about seaweed. Today we're kicking it off with a video about what seaweed is and some of the different types. Let's dive in. The first thing we need to discuss is what exactly seaweed are. Seaweed are algae, however there isn't really an exact definition of what algae is. That is because algae are not a monophyletic group of species. This means there's not one common ancestor from which all the algae evolved from. Instead, there are multiple groups of algae that all evolved independently. That makes defining algae much more complicated and leads to a much broader definition. With that being said, algae is often described as photosynthetic organisms that mainly live in an aquatic environment and lack the much more complex structures that plants have. Algae is generally divided into two groups. There are the microalgae, which are extremely small and often single-celled species. There is also the macroalgae, and it is these macroalgae that are our seaweeds. Besides macroalgae, you'll sometimes hear seaweed referred to as non-vascular plants. That is because although they can be very plant-like in appearance, seaweeds lack the specialized vessels and cells that plants have for the transport of water and sap. This means they also lack other plant structures such as stems, roots, and leaves. Since seaweeds live in the water, they're constantly surrounded by the dissolved organic carbon and the other nutrients they need for photosynthesis. They can directly absorb these nutrients into their cells, making these complex structures unnecessary. This results in the simplified structure they have compared to plants. Although seaweeds aren't classified as plants, they serve the same role in an ecosystem. Their ability to photosynthesize results in them acting as primary producers. They take energy from the sun and convert it to a form that is more readily available to other organisms, such as different forms of sugars and starches. Many marine ecosystems are dependent upon the primary production by seaweeds. It is estimated that about 2 to 10% of the global primary production is a result of seaweeds. While this may not sound like a lot, it's impressive because of the small area that seaweeds inhabit. The growth of seaweeds is generally limited by nutrients and by light. Many species also require a substrate to attach to. This means the habitats they are found in are generally nutrient-rich, well-lit, and in shallow waters. Chlorophyll is the main photosynthetic pigment found in both plants and algae. Many algae also contain other types of photosynthetic or light capturing pigments. These are referred to as accessory pigments, and they are responsible for the variation in color seen in seaweed. It is these accessory pigments that are used to categorize the different types of algae. There are three main groups of seaweed, and they are referred to by their color, green, red, and brown. The green algae make up the phylum Chlorophyta. They get their bright green color from the chlorophyll that is their dominant photosynthetic pigment. They are colonial, multicellular, and unicellular species of green algae. They are mainly found in freshwater environments and not in the ocean with only about 13% of species being marine. The green algae like really high levels of sunlight, so they tend to be found in very shallow water less than a meter deep. Most commonly, they can be found in tide pools. One of the most common examples of green seaweed is the different types of sea lettuce that make up the class Alva, such as this species here. Similar to regular lettuce, Sea lettuce is commonly eaten and is often found in seaweed salad. These are examples of the red seaweed that make up the phylum Rhodophyta. They are thought to be the most diverse group of any of the seaweeds. They are found in the ocean all over the world, but many species prefer warmer waters. 
In the red algae, the green color of the chlorophyll gets masked by accessory pigments. This can result in a wide range of colors depending on the different levels of these pigments. The colors that can result are red, pink, brown, green, or yellow. The reddish color comes from the accessory pigments phycoerythrin and phycocyanin. These pigments absorb light that penetrates deeper into the water. This means that the red seaweeds are found at greater depth compared to any other seaweeds. One Caribbean species has even been found at depths of over 200 meters. Another unique red seaweed is the coralline algae, such as this one here. The coralline algae are unique because they have a hard calcium carbonate shell in their cell wall. The last main group of macroalgae are the brown seaweed. They make up the phylum Ocrophyta, but are often referred to by their class name Phaeophyce. The brown algae are all multicellular and almost all marine. They are the typical image that comes to mind when we think of seaweeds. They contain many recognizable species, such as the rockweeds and the kelp. They are abundant in the intertidal and subtidal zones in the cold temperate waters. They get their brown color from the pigment fucoxanthin, and similar to the red seaweeds, their color can vary depending on the different level of the pigments. The last thing I'm going to discuss is some of the structural features of seaweeds. Brown seaweeds contain the largest species and are the most structurally complex, so that is what I have as my examples. The main body of any macroalgae is referred to as the thallus. Different parts of the thallus can include the stipe, which is a stem-like structure, as well as the blades. And the blades are important because they provide a large area to capture light and to photosynthesize. Other important structures include the holdfast, which as the name implies, it holds fast and attaches to the substrate. The holdfast can be fairly small in some species such as rockweeds, but can be really large in other species such as kelps. Another important structure in seaweeds is the pneumatocyst. The pneumatocysts are air bladders that allow the seaweed to float when it is submerged under water. This is important because it keeps it near the surface of the water where it can greater photosynthesize. And that's a bit of an introduction to seaweeds. Make sure you stay tuned to see the rest of our seaweed series. If you don't want to miss it, remember to subscribe and hit the diving bell to get notifications. Until next time, I will see you later.